Chapter One: The Bobbsey Twins and Baby May. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Simply Southern: The Bobbsey Twins and Baby May by Laura Lee Hope. Section One, Chapter One: A Railroad Smash just look at it rain exclaimed nan bobbsey to her brother bert as they were getting their coats hats and umbrellas from the schoolroom closet crickety grasshoppers i should say so cried bert crowding to the one window in the coat room already filled with boys and girls eager to escape from school it's bouncing up from the sidewalk something awful well i know one thing announced charlie mason pushing his face against the window glass until his nose looked flat the rain isn't going to bounce on my umbrella why not asked bert aren't you going to put your umbrella up in all the storm nope answered charlie with a laugh and a shake of his head why not asked nan curiously cause i didn't bring an umbrella that's why chuckled the boy you'll get soaked said danny rugg i haven't got a very big umbrella charlie but you can walk under it with me thanks murmured charlie danny's getting real good isn't he bert asked nan as the two dark-haired bobs twins made their way out of the coat room toward the main hall which was filled with boys and girls eager to get home yes danny's pretty good now agreed bert and i'm glad of it he's always used to be fighting and quarreling say nan it's raining like cats and dogs worse than that sighed nan i hope flossie and freddie won't get soaked didn't they bring their umbrellas bert wanted to know if they didn't oh yes they brought their little ones i saw mother call them back and make sure they took them replied nan bobbsey but even a big umbrella isn't much good in this storm the wind blows terribly i'm going to wait in the lower section for flossie and freddie all right i'll wait with you offered bert good-naturedly as the older bobbsey twins stood there watching the other boys and girls pass out the rain now and then blew in through the open door a gust of wind would send the door swinging back after some child had tried to close it and the water would streak across the floor leaving little puddles it's a regular flood laughed bert as he and his sister waited for the smaller twins who studied in another room which had not yet been dismissed there will be a lot of puddles on the way home remarked nan say do you know what i'm going to do asked bert as he saw danny rugg and charlie mason going arm in arm the better to fit under one small umbrella what are you going to do i'm going to take off my shoes and stockings and i'll wade home declared bert oh no you're not cried nan yes i am i'll tell mother if you do pooh she won't see me anyhow if i wade home i will tell you it's better to take off your shoes and stockings than to step in a lot of puddles and get soaked well i'm not going to do that said nan it's too cold i'm going to i don't care for the cold decided bert and then and there he sat down and took off his shoes and stockings putting his stockings in his shoes and hanging his shoes around his neck by the laces now i'm all ready for a washout he cried here come flossie and freddie reported nan hurry children she begged them we want to get home before the storm goes any worse oh i'm going to take off my shoes and stockings cried freddie as he saw what bert had done so am i added flossie who always wanted to do what freddie did no no cried nan you mustn't there see what you started she added to bert i knew they'd want to do this when they saw you well i can't help that chuckled bert let em if they want to i say no no insisted nan as she saw the younger twins sitting down and beginning to tug at their shoelaces you mustn't mother wouldn't like you to go barefoot in this cold rain it isn't summer yet keep your shoes on but bert has his off and i want to wade in the puddles well flossie so do i echoed freddie i want my shoes off i'll be the ferryman and carry you over the puddles offered bert and this solved the problem much to nan's delight flossie and freddie kept on their shoes and stockings and followed their older brother and sister out into the storm they were almost the last to leave the school on account of the little dispute down pelted the rain so hard that as nan had said the umbrellas were of little use the wind blew the wet drops under them but the children rather enjoyed it and flossie and freddie squealed with delight when bert carried them across the puddles at the gutters the barefoot boy wading boldly through the muddy water are you soaked, children asked miss bobbsey when they had reached home and bert 
barefoot. It's a good thing I am, said Bert, else my shoes would be spoiled, and I had to carry Flossie and Freddie over a lot of puddles. Their feet aren't so awful wet. You poor dears, I ought to have had you take your rubbers, as well as your umbrellas, said Miss Bobbsey. I thought we had enough of April showers. Maybe this is the last one, seeing today's the last of April, remarked Nan, walking toward the kitchen to put her dripping umbrella in the sink. Your feet are soaking wet. I can hear them, said Miss Bobbsey. Yes, they are a little wet, admitted Nan, looking down at them. I jumped over most of the puddles, and Bert lifted me across one big one, but I guess I got a little wet anyhow. A little wet? I should say you did, exclaimed Miss Bobbsey. Now all of you put on dry things. When this had been done, and the Bobbsey twins, safe and dry, looked out of the window at the pelting rain, they were very glad to be sheltered and in a comfortable home. "'Oh, look at the funny old lady!' exclaimed Freddy, who was kneeling on a chair near the window. "'She looks like Mother Goose.' "'But she hasn't got a goose,' added Flossie. "'She has a green umbrella,' returned Freddy. "'It's a big one, too. "'Mother, why don't you get me a big green umbrella like hers?' he asked. "'I'm afraid the wind would blow you away in it.' laughed mrs bobbsey as with bert and nan she looked out at the person flossie and freddie were speaking of poor old lady murmured miss bobbsey the old woman making her way up the street amid the storm carrying on one arm a large square market basket covered with a black cloth as if to keep whatever was inside dry from the pelting rain did indeed seem a strange figure as she walked along holding her large green umbrella over her head she glanced now and then from beneath it at the house as she passed she caught sight of the four bobbsey twins at the window of the home and halted a minute gazing intently at them oh do you suppose she's coming here gasped nan no i think not replied miss bobbsey then the old woman walked slowly on still peering curiously at the houses isn't she aw murmured nan to bert i wonder what she has in the basket and what she is looking for maybe she sells things suggested bert well i know what i'm going to do if mother won't let me go out and play boat he had asked to be allowed to do this but miss bobbsey had said no what are you going to do asked freddie i'm going to make an elevated railroad declared bert oh can you cried freddie oh, may i help may i ride on it questioned flossie nan remained at the window looking at the queer old woman as she vanished down the street in the mist from the rain though nan did not know it the same old woman was soon to play a strange part in the lives of the bobbsey twins how you going to make an elevated railroad asked freddie i'll show you answered bert no flossie you can't ride on it he added as his small sister again made her request it's only the toy railroad put up on some chairs oh that will be fun cried freddie i'll help he began dragging chairs away from the dining room table while bert got from the closet where it was kept a toy train of cars that ran by electricity on a sectional track instead of putting the track together on the floor as he usually did bert had decided to raise it up in the air supporting it on chairs and boards thus making an elevated railroad be careful now children warned miss bobbsey when she saw what they were doing don't get hurt no we won't they chorused bert had taken dinah's two iron boards the large one and the small one and with some other boards and boxes from the cellar and by the use of chairs had made a place to put together the track you can see em a lot better when they're up high this way said freddie as the track was nearly completed i wish i could ride on it i like to ride on elevated trains sighed flossie i ride it on one when i was in new york once she added well you can't ride on this replied bert you'd break it all up if you did hand me that curved track freddie and then i guess it'll all be done the last section of the track was put in place bert connected the battery set the engine cars on the rail turned the switch and the elevated railroad was in operation Whee! this is fun shouted freddie it's awfully cute said nan could i give my little colody doll a ride asked flossie she's so light a fly could carry her on its back bert yes give the doll a ride bert said and with smiles of delight flossie set her on top of one of the toy cars the bobbsey twins made up a game to play with the elevated railroad they pretended they were sending loads of different things one to the other bits of paper wore oranges and burned matches did very well for bunches of bananas my it's raining harder than ever exclaimed bert as he went to the window to look out do you see the old lady with the green umbrella asked nan no her brother answered she's gone hi freddie what are you doing he asked as he saw the little fellow crawling under the large iron board laid across the seat of the two chairs 
I'm playing I'm under the railroad bridge, said Freddie. Oh, I'm coming under too, cried Flossie as she crawled to where Freddie sat under the ironing board. Be careful, warned Bert. Don't jiggle that board or you'll upset the whole railroad. You'd better come out from under there. He reached to get hold of Freddie's arm and drag him forth, and just then a loud clap of thunder sounded. Oh! screamed Flossie, and she made a dash tumbling over. Bang! came down the ironing board, elevated railroad, toy engine, cars, and everything, on the heads of the smaller Bobsy twins. At that moment, another terrific clap of thunder fairly shook the house, and Nan cried out in terror, and Bert, too, uttered an exclamation of fear. End of chapter 1